can you paint the four minis from bridge four within four hours? I have one rule here that whenever I have a brush in my hand working on the miniatures, it counts towards the timer. This means that priming the miniature doesn't count towards the timer, planning out how to paint the miniature won't count, and if I'm in the middle of a painting session and my wife or my kids need me, I'll hit pause, go handle that, and be able to come back and resume the timer from there. My plan is to use our kids' timer for this, to have one hour painting sessions. Once all the green is gone, the timer goes off, the hour is over. An important aspect of doing this batch painting is that you want to have a plan of how to use each paint. Because the goal is you want to put paint on the palette once, use it all the way through all four miniatures, and then move on to the next paint. So you're not going to have a finished mini until the very end when all four are finished near the same time. We'll want to kind of identify different parts of the models that are common across uh, the board and just make a plan of what paint we want to use when. We'll start with the uniform, which might be the easiest, right? Uniform, this one will be colon blue, and I'll put that all the way through here. And with colon blue, as you've seen in my other tutorials, we'll use a Windrunner blue as a highlight. Uh, let's look at the skin. So the Lopin, he's Herdazian, so we're gonna go with dark brown. I'm basing that off of my Alethi Spearman, where I did a dark brown, it was a little too dark, I had to lighten it up with the medium tan, kinda gotta get, get a mix there. We have um, Rock and Teft, kind of our similar skin tones, which is dark brown plus medium tan mix, okay? So we're gonna mix these paints when we go with both of them. And then with Relaine, of course he is Parshendi, and he has a distinctive red and black marbling. I have no idea how to spell marbling. That's okay though. Marble in. This is why I usually type and I don't write things out. So it's been a while. Now let's go on to the hair. The Lopin has dark brown. He is basically uh, brown hair, so medium tan mix. Uh, the Rock, he has red hair. Teft, uh, I kind of envision as salt and pepper. With Relaine, he doesn't have any hair. Um, does he have a beard? Actually, probably not. He, I think he shaved when he was in the Bridge Four. And then we've got the wood parts of each miniature. This, this represents the base, it represents the spear shafts, and it represents Rock, his stew, and his ladle. So the wood, uh, we've done this before on other miniatures. That's going to be dark brown with medium tan dry brush. Okay, so that's gonna go all the way through. And then we have the metal portions. Keeping metal simple, we're just gonna do shard, blade, silver, all the way through. The boots, I didn't really like how the boots on my Alethi Spearman turned out. I think they matched too closely to the base. So I'm gonna do the boots black. I'm gonna do black boots. I'll, I'll mention here with a gray highlight. We've got Teft, who's unique in that he has these cloud things. The Lopin doesn't have it. Rock doesn't have it. Relaine doesn't have it. The clouds, I'm just gonna do white with heavy shade. What that means is I'm gonna use a lot of strong tone on it to bring out, to bring it down so it's not as stark white. If, if I get to it, we might have the glow of Teft's eyes, right? Because Teft is invested at this point. He's he's rising into the air, so he should be glowing. So if we can get to it, we'll try to do the glow here. And last but not least, we've got Relaine's carapace. So he's the only one with carapace. I'm just gonna do red carapace. Something to note here, we've got it kind of all mapped out. What we're gonna do is, throughout this whole thing, we're gonna make sure that we use strong tone after the base coat. This is because, as you've seen in my other tutorials, we need the details to pop. All of these things are gonna be base coat. We've, we've noted a few things that are gonna be highlight or dry brush, and then everything that we have, we have strong tone. It's the only wash that we have in the Kickstarter paint set. It's a good one, let's use it. So that's our plan. We'll see how well we can stick to it as we go through each individual painting session. So my usual performance when I'm timing myself on painting miniatures is about one hour per miniature and that's for rank and file for Warhammer back here right 
So these are my, these are just the Alethi soldiers. There's a lot of them, and so I paint them pretty quick. Adolin that I did, or the spearmen that I did, these guys took about two hours each. And so what I'm hoping is that the time savings that we have with doing batch painting, so like doing all of colon blue, doing that all at once will really help speed up the process of these guys and so that I can get this done within the four hour time limit that I've set for myself. So let's get started. So I've got my painting station set up. We're gonna reference our first hour block here. I'm gonna really focus in on the colon blue across the board as well as the wood, the dark brown. Uh, really focusing on the on the base coat. While I'm doing the dark brown, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the the hair of Lopin as well as the skin of Lopin Rock and Teft. If I have time, I'll get to the black of the boots. So this first phase is all about base coating. So I'll set the timer and go. So we're gonna put up a speed bubble throughout this whole painting process to make it go faster. So we started with a Zenithal Prime on all the models. And then with Lopin here, you can see that I'm not following the color guide to a T. I am coloring him, uh, base coating him in colon blue because I want him to line up with the rest of the miniatures on the bridge. Then we can go through rock. And you can be really sloppy with these, with this base coat of colon blue because we're gonna go over every other surface on the model with another color anyway. So just slap that paint on there. I'm using a really kind of a pretty big brush to get this done. So we're gonna speed up even more and make sure that the coats are very thin. We don't need to get crazy and have thick coats here. We just need thin coats. We can always come back later and add another coat. And so with Lopin, even though his uniform is kind of sloppy, we can kind of roll with it because he's the Lopin after all. This is our second coat. The f as, you, as I went through this, the first coat hadn't quite dried yet. And so I went and turned the fan on in my room to kind of help the drying process of the miniatures just so that I could keep moving forward. However, the problem with the overhead fan that I turned on was that it was starting to dry out my paints on the palette. And so this is something to note that you've probably heard about wet palettes used for miniature painting, and this is great to use um, for batch painting like this. If you're a beginner, it's totally fine just using a plate of some kind to put the paint on. So I started running into trouble with the uh, colon blue on the fourth round. The, the paint just wasn't staying on because the previous coats hadn't dried yet. And so I moved into a dark brown to kind of be my other big base coat on the models. So I did the spear shafts, the skin of most of them, and then the bases. Now notice I got this, the spear tip of Lopin. That's not necessary. I just made a mistake. We'll get over, we'll, we'll go over that with Shard Bear Silver later on. And on Teft, I forgot that he was not holding a regular spear. It was actually a Shard Spear. And if could, someone in the comments, what is the name of Teft's spear? It's not a sill spear. It's not a, sh well, it's a shard spear, but what's the name of his spren? So we're coming back through for a second coat of dark brown. Doing that dark brown gave us the colon blue some time to dry. And so we're able to go back through and do a fifth coat of colon blue.
and then on to a sixth coat of Cullen Blue. By the sixth coat, everything's looking really good and a really crisp, clear base coat for the miniatures. I came back to dark brown to go over the bases again for Teft and Relaine. And then I did a third coat of dark brown. Okay, now we can get into the boots and the skin, the black skin of Verlaine. Gonna base coat all those areas with black. What I found with black is that you usually only need one base coat. Sometimes you might need a light second coat, but black is very opaque, and so you don't need a lot of coats to make it stick. I'm getting close on time here. Just trying to get as much of this base coat done. There we go. So, timer's off. Brush down. Okay, so let's look at our plan. We did the uniform. We have the dark brown skin tone and hair. We've got the black for marbling. We kind of have the pepper for Tef's hair. Uh, looking at the wood, we did it. We did the dark brown, black boots. In an hour, we got a bulk of the painting done. And if you look at the miniatures, you'll see that paint is almost on every single surface. The only one that's not is Teft, and that's because most of it's the white clouds we're gonna come back to, as well as the Sil spear, not the sil spear, whatever. And then Relaine, we, we're gonna have to come back in with red for that and red for Rock's hair. I mean, look, Lopin is ready to go with the base coats. So the first hour, I think we're off to a great start. My plan is to finish off any of the base coats. And so what that means is we're gonna need to get the red for the carapace and skin of Relaine. Um, and then the red also for Rock. And then I do just want to get the white clouds for Teft. And then we'll go through and do shard blade silver on all the metal pieces. And I think while we're here, um, I do need to add a note for the belt buckles. So that will kind of go with the shard blade silver. And then I think I want to finish this up, finish the hour with the strong tone in preparation for any dry brushing and highlighting we want to do. Starting the timer now. Let's go. So we're going to come back with matte black on the belts. I didn't do this in the previous hour because I forgot about it, but we're catching it now and it's totally fine. So with the Lopin, we're kind of just making up his sloppy uniform, just throwing on some black to add some differentiation on his blue uniform. I'm using a smaller brush here. Uh, we don't want to get any black on the blue if we can help it because building back up after getting black underneath there may take a layer or two of blue. Moving on to carapace red. This is actually the first time I'm using this color. Uh, most of my miniatures so far have just been the colon colors. So this paint is pretty similar to colon blue in its uh, texture and quality. It's not really that great of a paint if I'm being honest and you just have to take care with it, make sure you know how it's gonna run on the palette. Test it out on the palette before putting on your miniature. Uh, it just doesn't really perform that well when I put it onto the model. So again, we can always come back and do thin coats, and so just make sure it's real thin, just build it up slowly. You can kind of get sloppy between the blue and the red and the black, we're just trying to give the impression that there's carapace here. We don't have to get really detailed because the, honestly the miniature is not that detailed at the joints. So I'm not sure if it's a rolled up sleeve or if it's skin or if it's carapace. 
So just make your best judgment as you go through. And a third coat. So now we shift over to shard blade silver. We want to capture the spear tips and the belt buckles. Again, you want a smaller brush for this. I'm using the one that came in the Kickstarter. It's a fine enough tip that you can use for this. And then the buttons, I hate painting buttons. I'm really bad at it. But usually with that, you just want to get a thin uh, brush, a pinprick of silver, and just go through and, and dot the buttons. Then with Tef's Shard Spear, we're going to paint it all in Shard Blade Silver. Coming back for a second coat of Shard Blade Silver just to cover up anything that needs it. Usually on the spears, that's where you need the second coat. Okay, Matt White, we're coming to Tef's Clouds. We want to get this base coat in there. I don't want to try anything fancy with the clouds. We're just going to do white with a strong tone shade later. So it's going to take a coat or two of white to make this look realistic. So while that those clouds are drying, I'm going to come and do a matte white dry brush on Tef's hair to get that older man look. Okay, and then we'll come back for a second coat of matte white on those clouds. Here's a fun part. We're going to get strong tone and slather it everywhere on these miniatures to add that contrast. If you have access to other washes or shades, feel free to use them here. I'm just using strong tone across everything because that's what's in the Kickstarter. When you come to Tef's clouds, you can get really heavy with the strong tone. We want it to really soak in there and give some contrast. And then coming back with Carapace Red in the few minutes that we have left, just to kind of build it up. Coming back with Carapace Red to build up that third layer on the Carapace. That's time. Okay, so base coats are all done. I did miss the undershirt of the Lopin, but I think what I'll do is do a Windrunner blue because I don't want to do more white on these models. Um, yeah, we'll come to that in the next video. But this is how they're looking so far. Base coats are in and the shade, which is really good. So. Strong tone, I'm going to mark off. And yes, I know I mis misspelled that. Strong tone. Sorry. Uh, the red is there. But not the marbling. So we have the red carapace, but we don't have marbling. Not sure if I'll get to that. Uh, we did rock's hair. We did shard bear silver across all the and belt buckles. Uh, we did the white with heavy shade. And then we did the salt and pepper hair for Teft. 
we're looking really good on all the base coats. Second hour done. Looking great. For this third hour, we're gonna focus in and finish off the base coats of red. Get that, get those bracelets on, and then kind of start up here with winter and blue and move down with the highlights. Starting the timer now. Starting out with carapace red on this third hour. I really want to finish off this base coat. And then we're gonna come to Windrunner Blue. So for the Lopin, I want to get his undershirt to be contrasting with the rest of his uniform. And instead of doing white, I'm gonna do this Windrunner Blue. And then I'm gonna go around and do an edge highlight on the rest of his uniform. I honestly really love doing edge highlights because it just adds so much flair to the miniature with seemingly little effort. Um, the trick for edge highlighting is just making sure there's not a ton of paint on your brush and just taking your time kind of catching those raised areas as best you can. And on each of the uniforms I'm gonna follow along in, in the painting guide where it shows that it's white on the uniform I'm gonna make it just a solid col uh, windrunner blue because again I don't want to use white too much on these miniatures. And even on rock I know in the painting guide his his sleeves are white and rolled up, but I'm doing them blue because I like that clean look. And then we're laying on his, on his collar that's hanging out, I'm going to do a solid Windrunner Blue. So here we're going to mix dark brown and medium tan. We're trying to get a good alethi skin tone and it's honestly really tricky. I would have loved if they included in the Kickstarter an alethi skin tone paint because it's pretty difficult to mix paints together the same way every single time. But I got a consistency that I was that I liked and I thinned it down to make sure that that dark brown base coat kind of gives me the foundation and then I just build up a little bit with a mix of medium tan in there. And we're also going to do the same mixture on rocks, rocks skin.
While I have medium tan out, I'm going to do a dry brush on the bases. In hindsight, I should have done the dry brush before I did the feet and the black boots because I had to stay away from those areas so I didn't mess up the paint job that I had done previously. So that's something to be aware of is that you can paint the base first and then come to the rest of the model later. Okay, and for a highlight on the black belts and boots, we're going to come in with a mix of matte white and matte black, and we're going to catch those raised areas. Okay, so it was the third hour. Let's look at what we did. We did the Wind Winter Blue highlight. Done. We did medium tan mix on the skin. Probably want to go back through there though. The hair on the lopen. The medium tan dry brush on the wood. The gray highlight on the boots. Um, okay, so what we're left with here, we've done most everything on our sheet except for the marbling and the glow for Teft. Um, but let's review our progress. I think what we need to do is do a little bit of triage on some of this dry brushing of the wood. I really got too hasty. Some light Windrunner Blue highlight um, around the board. And then Relaine. We need to do gray highlight. So what I'm gonna do is just dive into this next round. See if we can finish. I'm gonna go right into the fourth hour. And so I have that matte white and matte black mix to get a nice gray color. I'm gonna go through Relaine's skin and highlight different areas there, his fingers, his toes, and his face. So here we're gonna try doing glowing eyes for Teft. So we start with just painting around the eyes and the eyes themselves white, and we'll come back later with a highlight. So while we have matte white out, we're gonna mix it with Windrunner Blue and give an extra layer highlight, edge highlight around um, the uniforms and especially on the solid Windrunner Blue parts. Remember, with, hi with highlighting, you start with the darkest color and you move out to the lighter color. And as you move out to the lighter colors, you use less and less to create that contrast. Exaggerate the details. While we have the matte white out, I'm gonna mix in the carapace red. When I first started this, it turned into a pink color, and so Rock was gonna have some pink hair. That wasn't what I wanted, and so I added in some more carapace red to get it to the right color for a highlight. You can see on Relaine, it's really looking pink. It's like a pink highlight. I didn't like that, so I added in more carapace red to the mix to kind of dilute that and bring it closer to the color that I wanted. Okay, coming back to the glow on Teft. So after we did that Windrunner Blue highlight, we're gonna come in and, and just dot his eyeballs with the white. The glow, the source of the glow should be the whitest part of the model. And then I mixed it in with some Windrunner Blue to, to kind of 
give some glow effect on the face. This doesn't look great. I'm not really pleased with it. So if I went back in time, I wouldn't have tried it until I had practiced some more. So in miniature painting, especially in wargaming, there's something about doing the base trim of all your miniatures should be the same color. And this kind of just gives a, this is like the last step of painting your army is to get that base trim of all your miniatures in your army to be the same. And so we're just gonna go with dark brown to make it match the color of the bridge. Usually you wanna stick with a simple color or a neutral color like brown, black, or gray. And while I have time, I'm gonna come back in with a strong tone and kind of dilute some of that dry brushing that I did, that I didn't like the look of, and just clean it up. And we'll end early. So three hours, 40 minutes, got four miniatures done. That's what, 55 minutes per mini? And that's a pretty good rate. And there you have it, the challenge is complete. In three hours and 40 minutes, I got the four miniatures from Bridge 4 done. This challenge was really fun to do and I encourage you to do some similar challenges with your miniatures. In the comments, let me know what kind of other challenges you'd like me to try out. And as always, be sure to subscribe to see my next tutorial.